Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you coming back, welcome. Thanks for coming back. And um, about to start a new project, which is quite exciting. And uh, for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. My name's Sarah. And uh, I am a resin artist that likes to dabble in a bit of this and a bit of that and try some new things. And together we work out what works, what doesn't, and hopefully we get success at the end of it. So come along and join me and see what we do. All right, so I've jumped straight into it here just to save time a little bit. So this is an old guitar that I bought off Marketplace off Facebook. And I spent... I think 20 Australian dollars. Um, for those of you that haven't seen my previous guitar that I did as a commission, um, check out in my video list there, there's a, a full how-to how I did it with the ocean paw. Um, it's hung on the wall to this day and uh, cherished and loved and played. So I thought I'd revisit it and do a new one. Um, so here I am at the moment, I'm just removing the strings and cutting them because they're loose and shredded and damaged they're no good for playing even if i can fix it up to be at a quality to play so i'm going to cut them all off with the pliers and then um we'll go across to the bridge and we'll remove the rest of the strings from the bridge area and um again just using the pliers on the metal strings and then the scissors on the plastic strings so here we go just realized no that doesn't work need the scissors a lot easier that way and then now i'm going to get the strings and i'm going to get them out um from the little holes that the strings were fed through that hold them on the bridge uh, this was really easy actually i thought it was going to be a little bit more tricky but it wasn't it was really simple and then the white bar that you see across there um, I remove that and just for a visual reminder for myself I lay it down so I can see which angle is thicker and thinner and how it's lay on the board so I don't forget when I'm putting it back together or I just take it to the music shop and let them do it and sort it out either way all right back up to the keys now and I'm going to remove the wire that's wrapped round <clears throat> where they tighten them in the keys this was a little bit fiddly on some of them. Some of them were quite firm in the little spots and I had to use the pliers to pull them through and others just came out really simple. So it wasn't too bad a process really to dismantle this guitar. Get rid of all those wires and then we can get to the fun stuff. Let me know in the comments if any of you have actually attempted to do a resin guitar or instrument and de for decoration or for playing all right so here we are now and you see the uh where the damage on the hole there this guitar was damaged and dropped by the previous owner that's why it was only twenty dollars um so what i'm doing here is i'm using a five minute epoxy and i'm just going to bog up this hole and then i'll sand it um to smooth out the edges but i'm not too concerned about the overall look because we'll cover it with resin anyway and hopefully disguise any lumps and bumps that might be there um <clears throat> excuse me this five minute epoxy resin was also from kmart over here yes i know you don't normally think that kmart would do that but this i found um where was it in the car mo uh, in the car automotive area in Kmart. So if anyone wants your, a five minute epoxy, um, this one did cure in less than five minutes. Um, and then I was able to give it a light sand over. So yeah, I was quite impressed with it really for five bucks um, to do a quick fix or to stick something together. It works really well. So yeah, Kmart automotive area. All right, so. Here I'm playing with my ideas. And look at these Let's Resin Chameleon Powders and Colour Shifting Powders. And um, I'm going to use the Rust-Oleum as a black base because, as we know, when we're using colour shifting uh, pigments, the best colour to, 
to emphasize those color shifts and colors is to put a black base on them. So I'm going through here the different color options of the blues. Now some have got purple tinge to them and I did try one of them but I wasn't overly impressed and I will correct that as, as we go through. So here we go, I'm going to give this a light spray. I have uh, covered over the main part of the guitar just to prevent the overspray on the guitar. This is what my bog looks like um, once I've sprayed it with black. So it's quite rough, but hopefully when we put the resin on it, it'll smooth that out a little bit more. Now I'm gonna paint on this. So this black um, paint is actually slightly tacky at this point. It does dry out and then I'll use varnish. But at this point, I'm just, I'm just brushing on the um, color shifting powders. I think this one was corn silk called and I was hoping it was going to be more creamy color for the base but it's a little bit yellow for the sand but it grew on me and I quite like it actually so I'm just paint I'm just painting it on dry powder and then what I'm going to do is to prevent it rubbing off or so I can add more depth and more color layers I'm going to give it a spray with uh, varnish spray varnish and then that will seal the powders and then I can go over it with another layer and get more depth or color. Uh, and you'll see that as I go through. And then I'm gonna choose now to go through a selection of blues as well. And um, these are really quite gorgeous. I have put at the beginning, you may have seen that I did a, a free shot on here and it actually showed you the names of these micas these color shifting powders and pigments. Uh, it's not mica, sorry. And um, yeah, so you can see which ones I've been using. So yeah, I'll go through this process and keep adding and layering up the different colors. Now normally when, you are, when we use these powders in molds, we've got a base layer of clear and then we put in our, we paint in our or, or we paint directly on the mould the, these um, pigments, powders. And then we put the black behind it. So whatever we lay down first is going to be the colour that you see. It doesn't matter how many times you put layers on top. The colours will be, always be the ones that you lay down in the mould first. In this instance, because we've got the black at the back, as I'm layering up the colours, what we're going to see is the colour that I'm going to leave on top as being our colour. So it's a complete uh, reverse to what we'd normally do when we're painting these uh, products on our black or on our project. Okay, so I'm going to give it a quick spray with the varnish and that will tacky up the rest of the black as well because it's now quite dry. So we want that mica to stick and you need a tacky surface for it to stick. If you're using a silicone mold then the um powders normally adhere to the silicone really really well so you don't need to put anything to make it tacky so this one i think was quite a deeper blue now i think the one uh, the one i used before was a teal or an aqua this might be the teal actually yeah it's quite fun and therapeutic as well when you're layering up these powders and you're doing this process and you can see where you need more you can see if it needs a little bit extra but it's really good fun i do suggest i do i recommend if you are interested in trying something new with these do it go ahead and do it what have you got to lose buy a cheap guitar don't go and do a first project on an expensive guitar because it might not come out as well as you expect in your, in your mind. But you'll never, never know if you don't give it a go. So just do it. Go for it and try. And have fun being creative. And you know what? My, what's in my head? This might turn out completely different. But that's okay. Because that's half the fun of being creative with resin. And um, yeah. It's just, I, I love it. I'm addicted. As you probably guessed. All right, now this one, 
is more of a purpley blue. And I didn't like, I think it's this one. Let me just see. This might be the sky blue, deep sky blue, actually. I'm not sure. But then there's a blue one that I put on and it's got a purple colour shift, which I wasn't fully thinking through. This one. There you go. You can see the purple. Now, I love the colour. I really do. But I didn't want purple in my, in my ocean pour. So what I'm going to do is seal it and then try and correct it with the deep sky blue. So I'll go over that purple and try and blend it a bit. And I did get it mostly covered, although you do see slightly the purple um, by the time I finish going over all the colours. But that's okay. When I put the resin over, it'll either show really a lot or it won't. So now you can see on this layer now that I've just done some more uh, varnish, that I'm going back over the powders and I'm filling in those areas where they're see-through and more transparent. And you see a lot of that black still coming through the powder. So this is where we start layering up and getting to the, the depth of colour that we're wanting to get. And so that we'll get a good colour shift when we put the resin over the top. So tell me, do you like it so far? Do you think it's going to be okay? Or what's your what's your thoughts on... The, this process and what I'm doing. I know a lot, on the last um, guitar that I did, a lot of people were saying that um, I'd ruined it and that it would never be played, although at the time it was a broken guitar. Um, so I wasn't concerned. It was actually designed and commissioned to be a piece of wall art. And um, so, yeah, I I got a lot of people saying that. So I will tell you, I don't know whether this one will play well because of the damage to the bass. Um, but if there's a chance of it playing, I will have it strong and and I'll have uh, the uh, mu manager at the musical shop um, play it and I'll film it and we'll see what it sounds like. So I will upload that once it's all been done. So I'm going over with a lot more of the blue because I just think that blue, the teal, is lovely. That um, beach area as well, that needs going over too because look how black you can see through it. And I don't want it to be able to see that through. We're over that side. I'm very excited, actually. I know I don't sound like it, but I am actually really excited um, to see how this turns out. I'm really, really, really hoping that we get a really good high gloss finish and shine when we put the resin on it. I'm, I'm dead excited to find out how this is going to go. Oh, So you may notice as well, at the moment, I'm only concentrating on the top of the guitar. And you'll see shortly that I'll turn it on its side and we'll go along and paint in those sides as well. I'm not going to go underneath the guitar. Just going to do the top and the sides if I can manage it well enough. Last time I did it, I ended up having to cover the underneath because the resin seeped under. And rather than having to sand it back and losing all the lacquer, it was just easier to cover the back as well. And that's what I did with the last one. But we'll see. We'll just play it easy and go with the flow and uh, see where the resin takes us. Is there anything so far that you would have done differently to what I'm doing here? Does anybody know if anyone's done this with my with color shifting powders on an instrument? I just want to know. I'm really interested to think if anyone else has done this before and whether it works or what your thoughts was on the process. Yeah, it's really starting to come together now. I'm really liking what I'm seeing now. So we'll give it another quick spray. And I don't even know why at this stage. See all the paper around the outside? I think I was planning on taping it all off and keeping it all taped off. 
but I didn't want a harsh line on that beach area. I think that's why I took off the top bit of the paper that was stuck down. So these side bits are irrelevant, but I've now taken them off because the dust, the dust people is real from these powders. It's it. Can you see it? It's everywhere all over in between where the pow where the paper wasn't. So I took the papers off. So it was a bit of a waste of time, really, having those papers on there. But never mind. Uh, and here I am using a baby uh, antibacterial, not a baby wipe, antibacterial wipe from Coles here. And no, I'm not affiliated. And I say this every video. But I love these wipes. They really do a great job. Um, and I'm just going along and removing all of that dust from over everywhere and tidying up the edges where I um, I don't want it to be... Uh, ugly looking. Yeah, these these wipes are great for this. Even when I did the spray paint and I had a bit of over over spray from the spray paint, um, I got a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol and a cotton bud and wiped down the edges where the black was to soften that edge, um, and it removed the uh, that harsh line from the tape and softened it so I didn't have a straight line. That worked really well as well. As long as you get to it, you don't let it fully dry and you do it straight away, it works easy. So I'm just taking off the varnish that is oversprayed on the wood, on the bridge, and getting the mica off it. Last thing we want to do is when we put resin on is sealing colour where we don't need it. So I'm going along the edge of the bridge, up the sides, I mean, to get the colour off, making sure, the best of my abilities, that it's um, it's prepared for the next stage. There we go. So, yeah. Now, we're going to go along and start the side edges. So, I'm going to wedge it up in a minute. And then we'll start doing the edges. All right, I'm not sure if I've shown you this before. So I'm using this high gloss um, spray. So I've sprayed a little bit into this cup here. I'm gonna put a little bit of the powder in with it and mix it well. And then I'm just gonna paint some little waves um, onto the top surface. Um, I do like it. I'm not sure I love it, but you'll see as we go through. Um, how this looks and again tell me if you think it looks all right or whether you would give this bit a miss but i wanted some blended colors and don't forget again we're gonna have resin over the top of this so i just wanted some highlighted bits to put movement in the water rather than just having flatness on the um colors that i put on so far also when i was removing the overspray i did put a couple of scratches in the collar, you may see next to the bridge there, there's a divot of the collar and at the end of the bridge. So by doing this with the varnish, I can just fill in those marks and um, hide the damage that I did with my nails. There we go. Let's fill it in. And down here. late at night and we've got speeding cars down the road. Sorry about that. All right, so here we are on the sides. So we're gonna give it a spray and of the varnish and then start dusting. Just the same process as on the top, only we're doing it down the side. And I have wedged it slightly so I've got a better angle so I can see what I'm doing and try and get the um, powders to stick. And you'll see that down at the bottom there, I'm getting a lot of powder wastage. And I do try to use those powders. And I also do try to pour the unused powders back into my containers. But it was not as easy. It was like flying everywhere because it's such micro dust. It just floats in the air. So I'm not going to show you all the way through this um, process. As you can see, it's the same as on the top. So I'm going to um, skip 
this little part now and uh, move on. Alrighty, so look at the color shifts in here. This is all the size when you can see that greeny blue, there's a bit of purple, which is mostly covered. You just get the odd glimpse of it on the end there, depending on the angle. But you can see that teal and uh, that beach there is gorgeous. Now looking at it from this angle, a lot darker. And you can see how that color shift in these angles changes. Okay, so just want to say a big thank you uh, for sticking with me to the end of this video. It's not finished. Please stay with me, subscribe and hit your bell and the like if you like this so you can see the next stage of this project.